yesterday we stepped the mast. This is a deck stepped mast, which means that it fits on top of the deck as opposed to being a keel stepped, which would go through down to the keel. So Kirby 25s are deck stepped. Uh, we used a mast crane. It's a pretty, pretty light mast, so it's a pretty easy process. When I do step the mast, um, while the mast is supported by the mast crane, the first thing I do is attach the forestay. And our first anchor point, I usually hook up the forestay first. It's just a pin um, once Once the force state is attached, the next thing I do is hook up the running backs. Kirby 25s have running backs. Um, I'll show you my setup here. Ooh, this is wet. So here are the running backs. You can see their connection points about three quarters of the way up the mast. I have a large clutch here, which is the primary control, so I open to release. Um, I would pull for my quick adjustment, of course lock, and then I have a, um, a secondary fine tuning here that I could use as an adjustment. So that is my running back system. So we make the quick connection here. On both sides and then I would move to the shrouds next Kirby's have two sets of shrouds um, inner and outer they haven't been tuned yet which is why they are quite loose I will do that today um, it's just a standard turnbuckle system the um, the chain plates underneath are on the bulkhead and they run pretty much perpendicular off of the mast, which is why the running backs are necessary. Uh, finally, I'd hook up the backstay. Here we go. Um, and what I'm hoping to do this year is attach some type of elastic cord system that will keep my runners free especially it's not so bad when you're tacking upwind but i find when we are going downwind there is a tendency if you're not careful that the boom when it swings can hook the runners so i'm looking to hook up with maybe a small block uh, some elastic cord that will when one runner is engaged it'll keep the other one up as well out of the way so I have a loose gauge. The first thing I'm going to do today is uh, do a rough tune of the rig. This is a loose gauge PT1, which will fit the cable diameter that I have for my shrouds. And the goal today is to set the shrouds at roughly 32 to 35 on the scale here. Um, it says right on the scale, never to exceed 20% uh, breaking strength for your shrouds so that would put for the cable that I have that would put it right in the 32 to 35 range um, well that's still under strength actually breaking strength um, the other thing we'll try to do roughly is make sure that the mast is straight um, from I mean how to do that I'll be looking up the mast of course I'll also try to take a bit of a plumb line and see if it hangs uh, hangs down the middle of the mast when it's said and done. Um, sometimes that's a little easier said than done, but it just requires adjusting the tensions on either side until the mast is uh, hopefully as true as, as I can get it. So let's do that. All right, so we have these little boots here that cover the turnbuckles. Um, it's just meant to be reduce windage, I suppose, and also to allow the sails to move by more easily and to cover the, well, I think I said cover the turnbuckle. So how do we tighten the shrouds? So it can be a bit difficult by yourself when you have these little booties here because they keep wanting to fall down. So let's just uh, put the, so I'll put the, okay, that's where you need three hands. I'll obviously put the screwdriver in there and that's just gonna keep this 
top buckle from turning. You don't want to be turning the top buckle because that's just going to cause your cable to be twisting, which is not what you want. You want that straight. Um, what turns is, of course, the threaded section here. Um, well, let's just do that for now. So I just have a standard adjustable wrench here, and we are going to, again, I need two hands, but I'm going to hold this and turn, turn from left to right. And then now, I'm starting off, I'm going to just do each one a little bit and gradually back and forth, back and forth, just trying to make a consistent tension. Because you don't want to, let's say, tighten this one right away to to 35 on your loose gauge and then start adjusting the other side. If you try to make that one 35, then it's going to change the tension on this one. So it is a balance. You have to work from side to side. Oh, talking with my hands there with the, <laughs> with the camera in my hand is not a good idea. the loose gauge on and see what we are at here. So again, this is where you want through. Oh, measuring your cable. Let's see. So you'll notice there's three notches in the side. Um, here's for the, th the th three thirty seconds. Doesn't fit. You can see. Here's the one eighth. Doesn't fit. Here's the five thirty seconds. That does fit. So that's that means I'm using this scale right here. So again, if the goal is to be under 20%, you'll see 32 to 35 is around 12 to 14. So that gives me a bit of play here. So if it's windier, I can up the tension. Um, typically, I wouldn't really go much less than in the 32, 35 range. Um, but anyway, how do you, you run the shroud in between these two little buckles? And then you see if I can hold this. So you'll see right now I'm reading roughly 27 on the gauge and I want this dial to be moved over. So as I increase the tension on the shroud, this dial should move to the right. So my goal today is to be 32 to 33 range. 30. All right, so we are actually at roughly 33 on this side. And if I take it off, one sec. So if we take it off and check on the other side, we are at 32, so just a slight more tension on this one. And there, that's 33. Um, I do have little um, pins, obviously, to put in here, but I'm not going to put them in just yet. I'm going to work on the older shrouds right now. All right, so my older shrouds are set at 33, and my innards are at 32. Um, as you can see, that well, really, there's no wind right now. I, I wouldn't, uh, you, you wouldn't be moving quickly today, of course, but uh, I wouldn't really go, ever go any lower than this. That puts me at roughly 12%. If it was really, really windy, then I might crank it up to 
35 or 36 in that range. I typically wouldn't go any higher than that. That's just what I find works for this boat for me. And buy these now, but I just got the Velcro strip, cut it up, sewed on the little cotter pin. This one's seen better days actually, but uh, it, I'm still going to use it. Um, so, oops, I have to line up just slightly. I don't want to throw my tuning off too much, just so that the hole is accessible here. There we go, it is at the top and it is at the bottom too. So what we do is we put the pin through here. And then take our Velcro. Get that out of the way. And wrap it around. This, this means you don't have to spend time just um, you know, struggling to open up the cotter pin and then my little boot will slide over there and I'll put one in the bottom. Same idea. Wrap my curl around. And the boot goes over that. We'll slide it all the way down in a moment. Um, there. Good. Done. Now, next I'll come in when all these are done and I'll wrap this with rigging tape just to get the. I don't want sails or lines to catch on any of my uh, split rings here when I am tacking. So I will cover this with some uh, rigging tape eventually. But for now, let's put the rest of the little cotter pins in. So that is my initial tune of the shrouds. Now let's rig the rest of the boat.